this way of eternal hostility against every form of tyranny over the mind of man. Mr. St. Clair, how are you? I'm just fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. Mr. Dinkins wine is ready. Great. Jean Paul is expected. I know where he is. Monsieur Grenier? The accommodations are to your liking, Jean-Paul. This is so further than my previous quarters. Thank you, Alex. I faxed yeah. over Jean-Paul's clippings. It seems as though there have been seven related murders in the last 18 months. Now, that's too great a coincidence that all those deaths should go unsolved. I had my daughter run down those names, and uh, police didn't have any luck with them. You know, I had no idea you had access to such files. Well, I had no idea you were a revolutionary. You know, it was in 63. Some of us did it for excitement, and some of us did it for money. When it was all over, we vanished into normal lives. Or at least some of us did. And the other members of Titan? Otto Berger died of tuberculosis in 1967. About 10 years ago, I lost track of Jacqueline Barrow. But the rest of them are all here on this list. Yes, I've already read that. I can't go to the police for obvious reasons. And I cannot stay here forever. Well, with any luck, you won't have to. I need some rest. You know, Alex, what puzzles me is why now? Why now, after all this time, does someone want them dead? Well, there must be some sort of timetable. I mean, the murderer could have killed all of them at any time in the last 27 years. So something's obviously about to happen. Now, if the group's as covert as Jean-Paul says, it would seem to point that the killer must be one of the members. And if that's the case, it only leaves five possibilities. Uh, four. 
Grenier wouldn't have confided in us if he'd been the killer. He knew where to locate three, and I found the fourth in London. Jacqueline Barreau, living under the name of Lady Forrester. Okay. So we know where they all are. All we have to do is to separate the assassin from the target. Well, that's easier said than done. Don't forget this man apparently successfully killed seven people without leaving a clue. Then we have to convince the assassin that he's also a target. I presume you have a plan to protect the targets. Sure. We kill them before the killer does. All right. We start with Grenier. All the rest of the world need know is that he died yesterday afternoon in a motor accident outside his vineyard. What was I supposed to do? Grenier had help, and I barely got out of there. No, I don't think anyone's wise. Don't worry. I'll deal with Grenier. Well, you're gonna look good where you're going. Where am I going? I just booked your connecting flight from London to Gondar. It's Africa. It's West Africa. Where's my man? You can't see with the West Africa. They don't exactly put out the welcome map. Where well, are you going anyway? An American spice buyer. A what? A spice buyer. Oh, I'm going to be a spice buyer in West Africa. The man you have to see is Ngami Jatai. Jatai. That sounds familiar. When the revolution failed, he changed sides. He's now head of the secret police. Oh, I see. So I'm going to be off in the middle of nowhere getting my bun shot off. And you'll be at an opera, sipping champagne. Now, I have a rendezvous with Nikki in London, and then I have to go to Marseille to meet Pierre Yamani. Yamani? That guy's in jail for good, right? No, he got himself a smart lawyer and walked. Luke, we have a friend, Jean-Paul Grenier, who's moving with a very tough crowd. One of them is an assassin, one of them is Jutai. So I find Jutai, then what? Well, if you're convinced he's not the assassin, you just kill him. Oh, but I mean that thing. So please, keep a cool head on your shoulders. Can I always? Yeah, right. There are the phone records. One minute, please. Just to study it. Uh, yes, third floor. Thanks. Peter. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you need help, beep. You'll see the light? Oh, already. I don't play hero with me. Heroine. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? No, it's Sefton Rice I don't trust. Wish me luck. Skirt's not short enough. There's one record, one minute, please. Hey, come on. What's this all about, you guys? Huh? I'm working here. I'm working here. your boss, Brisket. Next appointment, night. Hi. Diddy Burke, Think Magazine. You make yourself comfortable. Good. Well, what do you think? Does it suit me? Great. It's you, a man who made his fortune as the king of rap. Off the record, rap is pap. This was the golden age of rock and roll. All we do now is renovate music to sell records. May I quote you on that? No, of course not. You may quote me as saying, today's rap artists are the poets of our times. Very good. These days you can't trust anyone. As you Americans say, pounds of prevention is better than a pound of cure. You Americans? 
What do you get off saying you Americans, pal? I know you still got unpaid parking tickets in Cleveland. You know who I was. And you damn well know who I am now. And I also know who you are, Mr. Brenner. Off the record, let's play a little word association. I say, why not? What would you say if I say star? A oh, Ringo. Blues. Oh, Pamela, uh, my first wife. Now if I say Alpha Tide. I'd say for the record, the interview is over. For the record, Mr. Rice. Someone is killing all the members of Alpha Titan. But, Mr. Brenner, there aren't any soldiers of fortune in my country. Soldiers of what? Unless, of course, they're working for me. I'm a spice buyer. And I'm working for Alpha Titan. Somebody killed Jean-Paul Grenier yesterday. Well, surely you don't think it was me. Why not? Well, it's, it's highly unlikely, wouldn't you? I'm sorry. How long have you been like that? Twelve years. Well, given what I know about my former comrades, I'd say your plan has merit. Yes. When do you want me to do it? I have a little time next week. Immediately. There's no time to waste. OK, I'll level with you. I mean, maybe I'm not a spice buyer. I'm here to tell you that there's somebody that wants you dead. Half the population would love to see me dead. But this is what happens, Mr. Brenner, when you switch sides in a revolution. What about the other members of Alpha Titan? They all have been retired by now, I would, I would imagine. If there's any one of them that's still dealing in death, I would suggest that you look for a wealthy man. How do you figure that? When Alpha Titan vanished, so did the treasury of Gandhara. Quite an incredible sum. I think I'm starting to figure this out. So you want to get your money back, so you're killing everybody. I can assure you, Mr. Brenner, if I wanted them dead, they all would have been dead by now. And you included. I'm afraid so. What's going on? Mr. Nigel. Nigel Sefton Rice is dead. Someone else got there first. Very good. Check in with the metal detector. He must be going up in the world, Yamani. A few years ago, he'd have simply stripped the clothes off my back. One has to change with the times. <laughs> Who are you working for? Not a cop anymore. You know that. Yes, of course. Only a renowned criminologist crawling around the back alleys of Marseille. <laughs> yeah, sorry about this, guys. Stainless steel. It's a real pain at airport security. So that's why you left the force? That and other reasons. I'll ask you again. Who are you working for? Private enterprise. I should have killed you when I had the chance five years ago in Ottawa. Why didn't you? Smuggling is one thing. Killing policemen is quite another. However, Mr. St. Clair, 
Now that you're a private citizen, that is no longer an obstacle. Well, since you know my reputation, perhaps you ask yourself the question why I was captured so easily. Imani, hey, I've got a business proposition to make. I'm listening. Nothing illegal. I'm in import-export now. Perfect. I'm expecting a shipment from Gandhar. Leave us alone. Are you sure? Get out. Talk to me. The guy is not our man. Trust me on this one, Suzanne. I just spent six hours with the guy eating an ostrich omelet. Yeah, OK, now listen, here's, here's the plan. Some renegade troops are going to kidnap him for a week. Now, eventually, the government will pay up. Yeah, he hopes. <laughs> well, what can I say? It's the best I could do. Seems that uh, job security is unheard of around here, so I think I'm leaving right away. Jay's going to get my luggage for me? You're very confused, Mr. Sinclair. What would I do with this information? What you've been doing all along, killing them one by one. You had this understanding, Mr. St. Clair. When you mentioned Alpha Titan, I assumed you knew where the money was. Obviously, you don't. Therefore, you're of no use to me. Miss Burke, isn't it? I appreciate you seeing me on short notice. Not at all. Won't you sit down, please? Thank you. Would you like some tea? Please, I'd love some. How can I help you? As I explained on the telephone, I'm here on behalf of the relief services to help a small nation in West Africa, Gandhar. Not many people have heard of Gandhar or its current problems. I know of Gandhar. I had some connections there once, many years ago. Lydia, my checkbook, please. Lady Forrester, you said you knew people in Gondar. Have you been in touch with any of them recently? I was only there very briefly, in my youth. Thank you. Perhaps you're familiar with some of our benefactors. Nigel Sefton Rice, Jean Paul Grenier. I hope this will be of some help. Now, if that is all, Miss Burke. Lady Forrester, I have something very important to ask you. Oh, please, don't leave me. Get the ambulance quickly. Poor Nigel. And poor Jean Paul. Now they're after me. Who? Who is after you? I had a daughter. My baby. Our baby. Otto and I. You and Otto Berger? She was beautiful. They took her away just after she was born. I never saw her again. You're going to be all right. He knew. He never saw his daughter, but he knew. I thought I loved him. We believed in the same causes. Yes. But he disappeared. And then later, I heard he died. Oh, oh please, please, don't leave me. I'm right here. I'll stay here. 
Satellite link. I'm here, Nikki. Good evening, sir. What did you get from Jacqueline Barrow? Lady Forrester. She's definitely not our killer. That's wonderful. Another dead end. No, not exactly. While I was there, someone tried to kill her. Luckily, the wound was only superficial. She thought she was dying, so she confided to me. As a member of Titan, she was in love with more than the revolution. She was Otto Berger's lover. Her romance ended when she found out that her idealist was a thief. Otto Berger had run off of the treasury. But unfortunately for us, He's dead. Still, if we follow the money, there's a good chance we'll get the killer. How did you dispose of Lady Forrester? It's about to happen. And guaranteed to hit the papers. Link out. You positive you trust your man? This will be the ultimate test of his loyalty. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. He was the last one. Somebody else got the others. No, I have no idea. What do we care? They are dead. Luke should be with you in Marseille any minute. As soon as he gets there, send him straight to Kronigsberg. What's in Kronigsberg? The legacy of Otto Berger. Welcome back. He's got a brother, Joseph. That's his address. It's a hire car on the tarmac. See if you can scare him into talking. Where are you going? Well, we're going to Linz. I've got a friend in the banking business. That money's somewhere, and we're going to find it. Then we're going to go to Paris and check in with Grenier. What about Nikki? Well, he's going to pick her up in London and bring her to you. And I'll join you both in the morning. Right. Go on. Joseph Berger? Listen, man, you don't know me. My name's, my name's Ed Linkcourt. Okay, anyway, <coughs> I'm a graduate student. And I'm trying to find this guy called Otter Burger. So, uh, I think he's your brother. And I think that is none of your business. I'm doing my thesis on emerging nations and revolutions in Africa. And I was reading, like, this really cool article on, on, on Gandhar, and your brother's name came up, right? My brother is dead, and that information died with him. He's dead? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sorry. When did he die? In 1967. 1967. Wow, man, what a drag. I can't believe this. Now, if you will excuse me. Listen, I'm stuck here. I don't speak the language. Could I, I, I let my taxi go? Could I just come in like you should telephone? Please? Of course. Thanks a lot. In here, please. It's a nice place. <laughs> You're a big shot businessman or something, huh? The phone is there. You got a phone book or something I could use? Hey, is this auto? Your book. Okay. Thanks. Yellow cab. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Sparkling Shay English. I need a taxi, a taxi for 14. Viersen Lindenstraße. Lindenstraße. Yeah. Oh, cool, great. Okay, thanks a lot. Listen, would it be possible for me to maybe come back, talk to you about some stuff, like anything your brother might have told you? I know absolutely nothing about my brother's adventures in Africa. Good night. Oh, wow. Well, all right. Thanks a lot. Good night. And good luck for your thesis. much harm without this. Ah, you're getting better, Nikki. <sighs> what the hell are you doing? <sighs> this Joseph guy was just too cooperative. So you just decided to dig up his brother's brain? That's right. Call it a crazy hunch. That's sacrilege. Nikki, when I went to this, this guy's house, I saw a photo. And in the photo was Joseph and this other guy. I think the other guy was Otto Berger. You know, you can go to jail for this. Hey, Nikki, in the photograph was a Mercedes. The Mercedes had quad lights. Quad lights came out in 1969, okay? Otto Berger died in 1967. That's two years before. <laughs> Gives me the creeps. Are you sure you want to open this? This is the only way we can find out for sure. It's like Joseph Berger's got one less skeleton in his closet. Thing? Yeah, we're making progress. Yeah. Light reading for you. How long will you have to stay here? Oh, I really don't know. I think you're going to have to be patient. How's the hour? Yeah. Peter, Luke's dug up something. Uh, I don't like the way you phrased that. Otto Berger's grave is empty. Take me upstairs. I think you're the one who has some explaining to do. Oh, you mean about the graveyard? Yeah, I mean the graveyard. Okay, see, you weren't around. So I just took it upon myself to dig up Otto's grave, and guess what? I was right. Well, you got real lucky this time. <laughs> and I had a hell of a time explaining it to the boss. Peter. Joseph's got very expensive tastes. Well, my friend in Linz had absolutely nothing on Otto. He had a hell of a lot on Joseph. 
It seems that he's been living off the interest from several numbered accounts for years. Probably the money Otto took out of Gondor. Yeah, probably. Okay, so Joe's got his dead brother's money, only his brother isn't dead. Yeah, terrific. We have no idea where he is or what he's up to. We don't even right now know what he even looks like. Oh, hang on a second. Here. Check this out, Pete. This is Joseph. This is his brother, Otto. Oh, well then. Yeah, that could be very useful. Finding anything in that pile? No. Just grocery bills, doctor's bills. Political contributions. Uh, Pete, do me a flavor. Check out the uh, telephone bills. Sure. New York, Paris, London, Vienna. There's going to be a whole bunch to 662 numbers. Nikki? Hmm? 662. Isn't that Salzburg? Yeah, I think you may be right. Salzburg? Wait a second. Look at this. These are his credit card receipts. He was in and out of Salzburg all the time. Always stayed at a Hotel Bismarck. You want a phone number? Yeah. 80-3614. It seems as though he... Calls there about four times every day. Looks like we're off to Salzburg. Wrong. Not we. You. And first port of call is the Hotel Bismarck. I'm on my way back to Paris. I'm going to take this picture to Alexander to work on. I also want to show it to Garnier. Trusted him, remember? We've eliminated all the other suspects. Grenier has to be the killer. I can't believe I've been misled like this. Yeah, but I don't believe that you have. You see, we're sure that Otto Berger is still alive and living somewhere in Salzburg. And that's where Grenier is gone. But what the hell for? Hold on. Look at this. It's all we have to go on. I found it lying open in the safe house. See, the middle pages 12 and 13 are missing. Susie, Lintz Huyte. How long will it take you to get the middle pages? Um, it'll just take a second. There's our Salzburg connection. I think that's the event we've been looking for. Otto Berger is obviously one of the candidates. Which one? Well, this is the last picture that we have of Otto. It was taken 20 years ago. He's the one with the beard. Well, so much for my health food diet. You know, this is crazy. We've been here two hours already. Just keep looking for Joseph. And Grenier. What do you mean, Grenier? I thought he's at our safe house in Paris. No, I'm afraid he's split, but I think he's come here. He's going to blow out the whole plan. No, I don't think so. I think he's going to lead us to Otto. Now, I'm going inside. If Jean-Paul sees me, it'll flush him out. You cover the back, you take the front. Follow him. Is your cop instincts?
piece of burger. I have to do this highway. What is your way? Killing? We know you're looking for Otto. Otto Burger is dead. And living in Salzburg. Come on, Jean-Paul. Don't be a fool. He's one of these guys. Which one? What's Susie's come up with? Otto Berger has created the perfect candidate. From his childhood days in Vienna to the present day, Kurt Wilhelm Schmidt is as pure as the driven snow. I mean, look at this. Birth certificate, passport, army papers. Here, yeah, even childhood photographs. You name it, he's thought of it. All this must have cost a fortune. He left Gandalf with 12 million dollars. 12 million in 1963. Wow. Okay, so if it's all so perfect, why is he killing everybody now? Because of what he feared. Once Berger realized he could be elected, he had to eliminate Alpha Titan. Any one of us could recognize him and destroy his chances. Blackmail. Yep. Greedy man's nightmare. Then we have to give the man what he's most afraid of. We should convince Berger that someone's ready to expose him. Well, how are we going to do that? Everyone from Alpha Titan's supposed to be dead. Well, that'll take a little technical daring do, but I've already got J.J. onto that. You see, with this recent spate of killings, Berger must by now be aware there's another player in the game. We just have to get that player to expose their hand. Oh, it's broken to English. Yes, the man with Mr. Schmidt, he's got a purple tie, and I'm so embarrassed I can't remember his name. Yeah, it's an emergency. So. Are the posters finally ready for my campaign? Excuse me, there's a phone call for you, sir. Sorry. I'll keep him on the line as long as possible. Please be careful, okay, Nikki? Do I detect a note of concern? This guy doesn't go anywhere without somebody carrying a gun. Neither do I. Hello? Yeah, it's me. Herr Berger? You're mistaken. Not what my mother said. Who are you? My name is Elisabeth Barrault. My mother told me a few things about my father, who deserted us. I don't know you, young lady. And I don't know your mother. A lot of people would be interested to know that Kurt Schmidt, upstanding political candidate, is really Otto Berger organizer of Alpha Titan. What do you want? Call it my inheritance. 250,000 US dollars. For my silence. Mother was very specific about 12 million dollars you took out of Gandhar. I see. Political opponents are obviously behind all this. Here's my number. You've got 24 hours. Hello? Yes, I thought you'd see it that way. And the money? Good. No, 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 no. We'll meet where I say. A public place. Say, Cafe Klagenfurt. You know the restaurant. It's just across the street from your headquarters. 7.30. Please be prompt. I hope this is gonna work. Nikki, don't worry. We got it under control, okay? Anyway, Peter's gonna be arriving very soon. Greetings, boys and girls. Oh, Luke. 
It's not the Normandy landings. Well, if you had my nightmares, you'd overprepare too. You can bet he's not coming alone. Well, you'd be pleased to know that everyone was most cooperative. We even had a little fun too. The boss is putting the finishing touches to it, and JJ will have it here in two hours. Two hours? That's cutting it kind of close, isn't it? Have you brought the money? I have it here. But I want some answers first. Do you really think I would be so stupid as to give you a quarter of a million dollars without having any guarantees? All I want is my money. Either you give me the money now, or your supporters are in for a big surprise. You are bluffing. Showtime. Have it your way. Hi, this is Jeff Burns, WNTW International, first with the news. On the eve of provincial elections here in Salzburg, Austria, Criminal allegations have been made against one of the front-running candidates, Kurt Wilhelm Schmidt, originally known as Otto Berger. Now, we're very fortunate to have here tonight in the studio three former members of a revolutionary squad known as Alpha Titan. On my right, from England, Nigel Sefton Rice. Well, Alpha Titan was a tactical unit in Uganda in West Africa. And on my left, also from England, Lady Forrester, formerly Jacqueline Barrow. As the leader of our squad, Otto Berger was primarily an assassin. Mr. Berger. No, no it's, it's a lie. Treasure. He then falsified his death and assumed the identity of Kurt Schmidt. It's untrue. And also on my left, from Paris, France, John Paul Grenier. In order to cover up his real identity, Otto Berger, together with his brother Josef, set out to eliminate his old friends. acceptance speech. Oh, look at this, huh? What's with this long face? I always feel good after we crack a big one. Two of you don't seem to realize that we left 250000 in cash for the night waiter. Guess we're big tippers. <laughs> you don't honestly believe that it was real money. What? Come on, Ricky. He wouldn't have brought a hitman and 250000 bucks. A few hundred dollars in used notes and the rest would have been shredded newspaper. Still not a bad thing. Hello, everyone. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you. Cheers. And what about Titan and the resurrection of its members? Re-ensconced in their present-day lives. Rather busy, I expect, explaining to their friends that reports of their death have been greatly exaggerated. 
That's Mark Twain. No, Sam Clemens. No, 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 no. That is Mark Twain. <laughs> Luke. Yeah. Sam Clemens is Mark Twain. See, you're wrong. It's Mark Twain. We all go to such lengths to hide our true selves. But our lies are always there, somewhere in the shadows, waiting to trip us up.